Gentlemen, I call this extraordinary meeting to order. Under Article 9, we may dispense with minutes and proceed to the single item on the agenda papers before us. I have promised the press a statement by 12 noon, which I think gives us time to cover all our bases. Uh, before we listen to Mr Fenderman, would anybody care to make any opening comments? Everyone was gentle and tactful and kind. No one wished to cast the least doubt on Gordon's integrity. Several board members had wry and vinegary remarks to make on the subject of the British press and its irresponsibility. Susie, Gordon's secretary, sat on Alloway's left and took notes in shorthand. "'I don't believe, Mr Acting Chairman,' said one board member, "'that the London Evening Press even possesses an Africa correspondent.' "'That's right!' Gordon put in eagerly. I have a friend who works for the BBC World Service in Nairobi, and he deposes that at no time has a single British print journalist... He broke off, realising that it was not his turn to speak. Uh, well, I uh, guess we'll come to that later. Others wished to remind the board that it was Gordon Fenderman's vision, Gordon Fenderman's sense of justice, Gordon Fenderman's idealism and sheer guts that had created this business in the first place. He had built it up from nothing to a respectable shipper in speciality coffees and thence into a major quoted stock market player, a famous brand. The question of his share dealings in, ironically, the London Evening Press was not a question for this board. If Gordon needed time to deal with his detractors, perhaps he could step down temporarily. The board member wished to emphasise the word temporarily, place it on the record and urge strongly for its inclusion in the press statement. When Gordon had cleared his name, and the board member for one never doubted that he would, then the way would be clear for him to be welcomed back to the chairman's office. How was that for a plan? The hear hears and pattings of the blotters came so fast and so unanimously that Gordon realised at once that this compromise had been prearranged behind his back. "'Before we come to a vote on that,' said Purvis Alloway, Gordon swallowed and drew in a breath, ready to begin his great speech. "'I have a special request to put to the board. It is a little unorthodox, perhaps, but since this is an extraordinary meeting called under extraordinary circumstances, I take it there will be no objection?' Everyone looked at Purvis, and this time Gordon knew that the surprise was not being sprung on him alone. "'I received this morning a letter from a lady staying at the Waldorf Hotel,' Alloway continued. "'Her name is Princess Mbinda, and she claims to have information vital to the good name of this company. She is waiting in my office now. I think we should hear her.' Gordon's mouth was very dry, and he took a sip of water, knowing that every face was turned in his direction. Setting down the glass, he looked up, feigned surprise at the sight of so many eyes upon him. "'Of course,' he said. "'Why not? Show her in by all means.' Alloway pressed the chairman's buzzer under the table, and the door to the boardroom opened. Everyone around the table rose awkwardly to their feet, Gordon last and most clumsily of all. Uh, "'Good morning, your—good um, morning, princess.' Alloway was a little unsure of protocol, and, like the others, had been thrown off guard by the extreme beauty of the girl who had come in and was now backed shyly against the wall. She was six foot tall and wrapped in vivid green, red and yellow cotton. The board members became suddenly and uncomfortably aware of the photographs on the wall which displayed similar girls in similar dress, girls with berry-filled baskets on their heads, smiling toothily at the camera. Alloway went to the side of the room to pull forward a chair which he had placed to the right of his own and a little further back from the table. "'Please, madam, if you would be so good as to sit down.' She stayed where she was, arms outstretched and palms flattened against the wall, her large eyes fixed on the window. Alloway understood at once. "'Is it the height, my dear? Would you like us to draw the curtains?' The girl nodded, and one board member attended to the blinds, while another switched on the lights. Immediately the tension went out of her body, and she dropped onto the chair with great elegance. Her eyes met Gordon's at the end of the table opposite, and held them steadily. 